to invite Mrs. Ibukun Awoshika to address us and engage us in the next 20 to 25 minutes. And question and answer we follow. Ma, you are most welcome and we are grateful. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. When you're clapping for Jesus, you clap like your life depends on it. When you clap for me, you can clap anyhow. But when we're clapping for Jesus, we clap like our life depends on it. Because it does. Amen. I'm going to sing one song. I know I have 20 minutes. Don't worry, I'll deliver and I'll finish. But I, I want you to know that the journey of your life, my assignment is to talk about leadership and godliness. But I want you to understand that whatever capacity you will occupy, wherever you will find yourself, in whatever way you will express the gift of God in your life, it is exactly that, the gift of God. And because it's the gift of God, you have to have the liberty of spirit to willingly and willfully hand over your journey to the Lord. God made you and I in his image. Therefore, we have the capacity to battle with God for that which he has planned concerning us because he gave us the power to choose. But I found in my short few years of life that the things, and I wasn't even born a Christian. I only became a Christian a few months to my wedding at the age of 28. So I had lived and I was born and raised as a Muslim girl from a very strong Islamic family. And I was very proud of my Islamic heritage. But then Jehovah found me and I started the journey of walking with Christ. So when I say what I'm saying through the song, it's for you to understand that no matter who you will become, as a leader of any capacity in any way, the first thing you will learn that will set you apart and will make it impossible for anything to stop you from completing the assignment and will make it impossible for anything to stop the manifestation of the power of God in your life will be that you will hand over your journey to God and you will only be the vessel through which God will accomplish that which he will do. So I have this song written by Nathaniel Bassi that has become my most favorite song in the last short while. But he speaks so much to my heart, my spirit, and my desire. And the way I perceive my journey with God that it has become something that, you know, I, I sing it like my life depends on it. And he just says, take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel nothing more and when you're done please take the glory i'm satisfied just to see you glorified one thing i want you please be seated one thing i want you to know if you really want to be a leader for generations if you want to be a leader that will make a difference it will not be about you or just about your humanity. It would be about the divine power of God that will walk through you. But it would also be because you will have an understanding that it is not by power nor by might, but by the Spirit of God. And that the Bible says with God, all things are possible. And because all things are possible with God, I have no respect for who your father is or who your mother, mother is. I do not have a respect for where you have started from. I don't care if right now your family lives in one bedroom and there are 10 of you. It is absolutely irrelevant. Why? Because the beginning of a journey does not define the end. God, who is the master script writer of your life, is more than able to perfect his plan and his purpose for your life. And therefore, like our father said, when he was talking to you about the eaglets in the, in the middle of the little chicken and thinking that he's part of them when he's bigger than them. 
When you understand who you are in God, and that's why I used the scripture earlier, they that know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploits. When you know God, then you know that there's absolutely no, need, no limitation on what you can do. There is no limitation on who you can become. There is no limitation on how far you can go. There is nothing that is too big for you. There's no position that is reserved for some other people. Everywhere and anything that is available upon the face of this earth that God has ordained as part of your journey, the capacity to occupy it, the Lord will make available to you at the point that you need it, at every stage of your journey. But starting with an understanding that you belong to God, your journey belongs to him, that the stage of your life is yielded to him, that you're just a vessel that will be willing and obedient. Because, you see, if you're a vessel that is willing and obedient, as a leader, you will be a man that will fear the Lord. And if you're a man that fears God, it means that you would be a leader with a heart. Because when the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself, and he was talking to those who fear God, when you're a leader who loves your neighbor as yourself, there are things you will never do. You will be a leader that will build your community, not one that will destroy it. You will be a leader that will do things that will add value to your community, not the one that will steal the money that is meant for everything that the community needs. You will be a leader that will care you will do whatever your own assignment is. And you see, the assignment is not about is big or is small. No. It's about the fact that that is what you have been called to do. And no matter what that thing is, as you prove yourself and you manifest the fear of God there, and you prove and you manifest and you show the word of God alive, because you are the vessel through which the word of God will come alive. Leadership the way we have bastardized it is tied to position and titles. But that's not what leadership is. You can have a big position and not be a leader. Because if you're a man that the people who walk under you laugh at you behind you, they cannot trust you because they know you are not a man that can be trusted. When you speak, they have no respect for the word that you speak because they know that when you say it's day, they need to check outside and see whether it's dark or there's daylight. Then you're not really their leader. You're the man that for economic reasons or for whatever reasons, they submit to for their benefit, but not because they respect, they honor, or that you will influence that which is important in their life. So if you are a child of God, and you want to walk as a leader, you must first understand that the leadership is the attribute of your life that manifests. But the foundation of who you are is as a child of God. And as a child of God, who are you? An ambassador of Christ. A vessel, to a witness of the gospel. And that no matter where you find yourself, no matter what position you occupy, no matter how big the title is, the most important thing first is that you will never lose the identity of who you are in Christ, nor will you separate yourself from the assignment. And what is the entire assignment of this Bible? That there will be a reconciliation of men unto Christ. And therefore, in your journey in whatever capacity, whether you're just a fellowship leader or you're the leader of a small committee to organize feeding the people, will you do that in a way that somebody who does not know the Lord will watch your character, will watch your language, will watch your attitude, will watch the integrity with which you do even the smallest of chores and they will see God in you. Such that if you are the last person on the face of the earth that will preach Christ to them, will they accept Christ from your lips? Or will you say to them, come and give your life. I'll say, you, how? Don't I know you? Don't I know what you do? Aren't you the one that stole money the last time? Aren't you the one that took more, uh, more food than you deserved? Aren't you the one that cheated in the exam? Aren't you the one that did this or that? Our leadership is not about title. It's about the character, the fruit 
of our interaction with others, the fruit of our ability to influence others, and what kind of influence do we leave? If we seek godly leadership, if we want to be men and women of influence with godliness, then we start from our understanding of who we are in Christ and our commitment to the ways of God and to the word of God and our commitment sometimes at a high price to do that which is right because ultimately there is a price when we don't. If what you will do in whatever position you occupy will cost you the right to preach the gospel, then you have gained nothing. You have lost everything. And therefore, we that know our God, we will be strong in the face of the kind of challenges that will want to cost you to give up the practices and the ways of God and the word of God such that you will not be able to preach the gospel. So I want you to never forget that as you grow in your journey, no matter where you get to, don't forget, you live in the world, you're not of the world. The environment will always try to condition you to do things in a way that will take the gospel from your lips. But you must make a personal decision that I know God, I know his word, I choose to live my life according to that word. And sometimes it will cost me, but every price that I pay for the name of God, for the sake of the gospel, is a price that is worth paying. Because ultimately, God owes no man. No man. He owes no man. I didn't come this far by choosing to just do things anyhow. There are many people that have got into our office by doing things anyhow. But guess what? It is not about the journey. It's not about the temporary positions. It's about how you finish. So how do you want to finish? I am certain that I will finish well. I have absolutely no doubt that I will finish well. Because I know that my journey is based on the purpose of God for my life and the word of God. And that sometimes... Our trials and afflictions will arise in the course of that. But we know that God is faithful to his word at all times and in all things. What are the attributes attached or used to describe a leader? To lead, someone to guide, someone to care for, someone to teach others, someone to control, to govern, to oversee. Captainship, stewardship, guardianship. You cannot teach if you haven't lived by example, because words are cheap. You know, as parents, if we tell you, go and do this, and you know that we do the opposite, you say, mm. you know, daddy will tell me all the time, don't do this, don't do this, but he does it now. Isn't that what you say? Because example is a bigger teacher than just what we say. And it's the same for you. If you want to lead other people and you want to influence them for God, your entire life is a service unto God. If you are a doctor, you are a doctor in the service of God. Because that is the space that you have been assigned to. That in the medical field, as you practice your medicine, the way you conduct yourself, your diligence, your dedication, your love, your care for people, will minister to others for Christ. Because you will conduct yourself manifesting the attributes of God in that place. If you are a teacher, the way you teach as a leader of young people who look up to you will be different. You're not the one that takes advantage of the young girls in your class by wanting to sleep with them. Or the one that will take money from the boys to give them exam results. Or to give them the exam paper. No. You're the one who cares about the people in your class because you want their lives to amount to something in order to build a nation and to build generations that will serve the Lord. Therefore, you will take interest in them. You will care for them. You will teach them. You will show them the ways of the Lord. You will help them through their difficult times in their academics because you are sowing seeds in the future that you will get value from. That's what a leader does. You show example, but as a child of God in your leadership, 
You show the attributes of God. You manifest God in your leadership because it is one of your greatest opportunity to minister. You know, every way that you preach is not by holding the mic. To some other people, I'm a business person who is a Christian. That's not who I see myself as. I'm a Christian who is assigned to business. They're two different things. I understand that the way I will do the business and the way I must conduct myself in every business space that I occupy myself, I must take Christ there and never destroy the name of the Lord in what I do. And therefore, when you get to the point where you're saying, what will Jesus do here? And you know you're at a crossroad. It's easy to resolve those crossroads. Because all I have to ask myself, will this serve the purpose of God? Or will it work against the purpose of God in my life? Once the answer is the other way, I know what to do. I don't have to think twice. And no amount of money can take away from that goal. Matthew 20, 25 to 28. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom to many. So leadership in God's dictionary is service. Service to your community. Service in your duty. Service to your assignment. Service that will benefit and influence lives for God. That's why the theme of this conference is impact. You know, it does not matter how large you live, how long you live. If there's no fruit, and I'm not counting how many houses you build, because, you know, houses are nothing. If you build 10 houses, when you die, how will you know who will live there? If you end up with children that do not fear the Lord, they will sell it for peanuts to buy drugs. So we're not talking about those things that, they don't count. We're talking about how do you transfer based on how you live your life here from your earthly account to an heavenly account based on your obedience to the word of God and your actions as a leader. So when you go into position, you don't go with the sense of I'm a big man. You go with the sense of humanity. When you want to be a leader with godliness, you will go like Christ did. What did he do? He was her biggest example. He showed how to love. He showed how to care. He showed how to serve even his disciples. He showed how to provide for his followers. He showed the heart and the love of God in his service to those that he was called to. Though he is God, yet he humbled himself under them. So a God-like leader can sit in any high office but with humility. Because, you know, office is nothing. One day you're there, the next day you're not. But the fruits of your impact while you were in the office is what will remain. And people will have to judge you by that. A light afflictions are but for a moment, the Bible says. They work it for us an exceeding an eternal weight of glory. So trials will come, challenges will come, but guess those things that will speak for you, even as a leader in, that, in those situations, the fruits of your journey, the trail that you leave as you walk. When you walk through your journey as a leader, are you leaving a trail of righteousness, a trail of kindness, a trail of love, a trail of encouragement? Are you leaving a seed of the word have you positioned yourself in the way you live in such a way that in your day of trouble, they will, people will arise and surround you because they will stand up for you because they know you based on how they have experienced you. So I want you to daily ask yourself, I want to be great, fantastic, and I want every single one of you to be great, but I want you to be great for Christ. And when I say I want you to be great for Christ, I don't mean I want all of you to be our father, to be a pastor. No, 
We don't all have to be. We will have pastors amongst us. We will have leaders of the church amongst us. But we must have leaders in the marketplace too. We must have great scientists. We must have like the vice chancellor that came. We must have people that occupy political offices. We must have people that occupy every kind of office. We must have people that sit in the UN and have a godly kind of voice. We must have people that sit in the doctor's clinic, that sit in the Senate, that sit in the House of Rep, who have a godly voice. We must have people that have carried the grace of God, the heart of God, that carry the attributes of God. Go and read Isaiah 11 too. And ask yourself, those seven attributes of God, the fear of God, the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge, all of that, you want people that have that as our leaders. Because the way they will lead will be different. When you're a leader with a heart of compassion and a love for the people, you will not steal the money men to build the roads that people will ply through. When you're a leader with a heart and compassion for the people, you will not steal, men for, not steal money meant to build hospitals that will serve the people. When you're a leader who has the fear of God and a heart of compassion, who loves his neighbors as himself, what you will not want done to you, you will not do on their behalf or to them. And it's the same if you're a teacher that who fears God and loves God, you will not sleep with another man's daughter when you should be nurturing her to be the best of herself. You will not help a boy to cheat because you are destroying his life when you do that. You will not support a guy to do the wrong thing. You will help him to find the way to do the right thing. And leadership has nothing to do with age. Do not let anybody despise your youth. But do, let no one also tell you you need to wait to get to a particular age before you can be great. Greatness can follow you from any age. And I need you to understand that. One, um, there's a Yoruba thing I'm trying to remember. I always get stuck with that. Tom Odeba ma itoma jasham atikekere lo tin shenu sham sham. Something like that. Okay, you understand, Sha? As they used to say when I was in Ife, idea is need. Which means that the fruits of where you're going you can start to manifest it from where you are now by the choices that you make. Your entire life is a total summation of every choice that you will make. And the choices that you will make now will impact your ability to be a great leader. So I need you to understand that you have a litmus test for every choice that you need to make. That every time that you are faced with a situation, should I turn to the left or should I turn to the right? The Bible says we will hear a voice telling us which way to go. Whether we should turn to the left or we should turn to the right, that we may walk in it. Which means that if you want to be successful as a leader, you have to be a man of the word. Because there isn't a single problem that you will encounter that I have not found in my experience across my multiple uh, entrepreneurial and co corporate journey that there isn't a word that applies to it that gives me the instruction of how to move through it. So if you want to be a godly leader, you must be a man of the word. You must also be a man of counsel, which means that you must build for yourself a nucleus of God-fearing influencers, that the people around you that you will turn to for counsel, you must vet them in advance. You must in advance know that there are men and women who fear God, who share your same values, who are thinking from the same perspective where God is concerned, so that in your time of weakness, you will find righteous voices that will lift you up. Remember, the children of Israel would have lost the battle, except that Moses had what? Aaron and all. He had the Aaron's and the all that held his hand up. We all need our Aaron and our all's in our life. And therefore, your circle of influence is important because that is where you will get counsel. The Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. But also, you must be informed because counsel that we receive is information. And that information allows you as a leader to be able to take a 360 degree view of any situation, but you have the responsibility to make the right decision 
in line with the assignment and the call of God on your life and that which is in line with the word of God in whatever situation you find yourself in. You cannot separate your journey as a leader or an aspiring leader away from your journey as a child of God. God did not create schizophrenia. As you build your life as a Christian and you invest in your righteousness and you invest in your Christianity and you invest in your knowledge of the word and you invest in your relationships in the house of God and you invest in righteous relationships around you and you're careful to live to the best that you can as the Lord gives you grace according to the word of God you would find that even though you might walk through trials and tribulations sometimes in your journey of leadership you will finish well and your legacy as a leader more than anything else will glorify the father and generations after you will remember you and they will bless the name of the lord for you there isn't a single thing that you cannot do in your life there isn't a position that is too high for you to occupy god plus you is the majority that you need at every time to do anything that you need to, as long as that's what the Lord has called you to. God bless all of you. Thank you very much. A rising ovation. And I think... All right, while we're sorting out the physical people, I'll start with the people online. So someone just said, hi, I'd like to ask what are your advice to a team of undergraduates trying to create a tech startup that will take Nigeria to the next technological era. I like this very general claim, all right? I don't know how many thousand young Nigerians right now are trying to build uh, tech startups. Please put the questions back that will take Nigerians to, uh, to the next level. Look, all I'll say to you is ideas are a dime a dozen. Ideas are good but they dime a dozen. The idea that wins is the idea that is executed successfully. And for you to execute the idea successfully, you need to do your homework. You need to test that your theory makes sense and that your theory is, can be executed. That is viable. That is not just viable for you and your friends, but that is viable on a sustainable level. And you must be open to criticism. When you put your idea together, Try and get into any of those hubs. You know, you have, if you go to the Yaba area, there are, there are different tech hubs where you can get a chance to walk at the stage. Because you're also in a hub, there are other people's knowledge that can add to the knowledge of your own ideas. Because you see, it's about the power of ideas. And if, you're, if you have humility of spirit, you will understand that you are not all-knowing. Only God is all-knowing. And no matter what you know, when you're in a community of other people trying to think of the same kind of solutions, even though they're trying to solve different things, your fundamental knowledge of science and technology itself can empower you. Because somebody's half question and your half question could be the whole answer that will be required to change the world. And you must learn to move in stages, step by step. Okay? First, your proof of concept find whatever money from family and friends and all of that to take it uh, to the next level to show that it works when you do that i can tell you categorically there's more money in the world looking for ideas than the ideas looking for money that is the truth it's simply about the power your ability to put your idea together in a format that it attracts the attention of money and so you need to be systematic about it don't just uh, glamorize it but do the work and when you do I'm certain that ultimately you would have uh, some solution I saw that in boy AJ has been here those are the real tech boys so he would have told you okay go here go there go there because that's what they do every day and there's a whole generation of Nigeria is one of the most blessed nations in the world with a lot of smart young tech people that is the power of youth that we have ideas and all of you need to use your mind to create solutions for every problem that you see in our society so we can build a nation you will be proud of. If we don't, this is what we're stuck with. We all have to build it so we can have the nation of our dream. And it's your responsibility too. Thank you.
uh, yes, a physical audience. Uh, if you are in um, uh, grade 12 there, can I see your hand? Grade 12, grade 12, SS3, anyone there? None, none. Yeah. Are you grade 12? Yes, quickly ask your question. That's yellow, oh yeah. Quick, quick one. Okay, good evening everyone. Good evening, Matt. Thank you for the wonderful speech. Yeah, I want to ask, I want to ask, how can a Christian, a, a born-again, genuine Christian, go into <laughs> politics and, like, you're passionate about politics and you don't like the corruption and everything you see in politics, but, you know, going into politics, they say, is a dirty game. So how do you go into politics without staining your ends and maintaining your true value and your passion to correct things and to change the world of politics as a Christian? Honestly, I hear you, and I think it's a million-dollar question. In fact, it's a $1 billion question that many, many Nigerians would like to ask. But the bottom line is, except there are enough of the same kind of people who think alike in that space, we cannot have the inductive effect of change that we want to see. That is the truth. So if you really, really want us to change it, then if there are enough of you who are Christians, you're young and you're interested in politics, all of you go together to one word. Sign on into that word. Hijack the word for Christ. When you hijack it for Christ, the rules of the game, you will change it according to what works with your own conscience. Now, it will take a long time it might take a long time but you know god is a god of wonders <laughs> when we start somewhere we can hope that things will change over time but the only honest answer i can give you is that the system as it is right now as, does not allow it to be attractive to you however if you choose to register there nobody can stop you from doing that if you go there and you choose to be a member of that world as a Christian in your own, with your own values, it's up to you to make that decision every day, not to change. What you can stand for is that the way you do your own thing and prayerfully every day, you will influence some other people around that space enough to begin to draw some people to your ways. I know most of us think we have given up on Nigeria. We think that it can never work right. Nigeria can never be this uh, corruption-less country. But we cannot afford to give up. The Bible says we hope against hope. What we want for our nation, we must hold on to that dream. But we not only dream it, we must work it. Faith without works is what? It's nothing. So we have to be serious about working it. It will cost us. There's a price we pay. But there has to be a critical mass. You see, when there are too few people involved, what we do is we get attacked. We get lynched. Because there are enough of the cowboys who are willing to collaborate to, uh, to commit evil. And that's what the young man is afraid of. But we also have to be strategic. We have to be smart. If you are interested in politics, mobilize other people like you. If we start with one word, God just needs a seed. Remember, how many fish and um, bread did Jesus use to fill many thousands? Five and two. Hallelujah. God just needs a seed. Hallelujah. If that is the vision and the call of God on your life, continue to pray about it, but act on it too. You might be the first and only Christian in the world that you join, but you are a seed in that place. And when you do, you trust God that you would be the vehicle of change that will cause the change in your spot. Thank you very much, Ma, and God bless. What do we say to her? Uh, I know you are generous in forgiveness. Am I right? You are going to forgive me because we just have to move with time. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. God guys don't worry we will talk another time god so bless you. please
we 